Today we're going to talk about formulas and nomenclature. Nomenclature is how compounds are named, just so you know what I'm talking about with the concept of nomenclature. In terms of formulas, there are various types of formulas that can be used. A formula is a symbolic representation of the elements in a compound and their relative numbers. For example, the formula for water is H2O, meaning there are two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom in water. Sodium chloride, or table salt, has one sodium ion and one chloride atom. Phosphoric acid has three hydrogen atoms, one phosphorus atom, and four oxygen atoms. The molecular formula is the symbol which represents exactly how many atoms of each element are present in a compound. These two compounds, one is benzene, C6H6, and one is glucose, C6H12O6. In both of these cases, there are exactly, tw um, for example, with benzene, there are exactly six hydrogen atoms and six carbon atoms in benzene, one molecule of benzene. Glucose has six carbon atoms, 12 hydrogen atoms, and six oxygen atoms. So the subscripts always tell you how many of each atom there is in, in, in this molecular formula. The empiric formula is the simplest ratio in a compound. So for example, benzene, the simplest ratio is one to one. So its empiric formula would be CH. For glucose, its simplest formula, its simplest ratio is C. H2O, because there's one carbon for every two hydrogens for every one oxygen. The structural formula shows the connections and arrangements. And what you see up here in B, C, and D are different kinds of structural formulas. The first is a stick or a bar structural formula. The second is a ball and stick formula. And the third is a space filling formula. Sulfur is composed of eight sulfur atoms, a sulfur molecule, and it can be written as S8. It can be represented in a structural formula as shown in A, a ball and stick formula or model as shown in B, or a space filling model as shown in C. The sulfur atoms here are represented by yellow spheres. Benzene is produced during oil refining and has many industrial uses. The benzene molecule can be represented in several ways. The structural formula is shown in A. The ball and stick formula is shown in B. The space filling mo uh, model is shown in C. Now one thing you'll notice in the uh, structural formula is you have two bars between some carbons and one bar between uh, some carbons. And what that means is that some of the carbons are bound by two bonds and others are bound by a single bond. Now there's a concept known as isomers, and isomers are defined as two compounds that have the same molecular formula but different molecular structures. And what you can see here is there's actually two types of isomers. One is called a constitutional isomer, and the other is called a stereoisomer. A constitutional isomer is also sometimes called a structural isomer. And that means that the atoms are connected to together in different ways. There's the same atoms, but different connections. And what you can see on the left here is, in one of the structures, the fluoride is bound to the second carbon. In the other structure, it's bound to the last carbon. Now, stereoisomers are isomers that are also known as spatial isomers. And they're isomers that are due to different orientations. And there are actually two forms of that entantomers and diastomers. Entantomers on the right here are mirror images of each other and you can see that those two molecules look like the image and the mirror image of, e of each other. On the left you see that there these are not mirror images and this particular type of isomer is called a cis and a trans isomer. The cis isomer has the CH3 both on the same side in positions one and four, thus cis meaning same. Trans, they are opposite each other, one and four this time, and what you can see is they're, they're 
opposite each other, thus they're called trans. Rotomers are diastomers in which there's a rotation around a central axis. Ions are simply atoms that have lost an or gained an electron. This is an example of a sodium ion. And a sodium ion has lost an electron and has more protons than electrons and thus is signified by a positive sign beside the, uh, beside the structural, beside the formula. The superscript plus sign means that there is one more positive charge than negative charge. Now, some ions are formed by only one atom, and they're called monoatomic ions. And this periodic table shows you several examples of monoatomic ions. The, um, what you can see in the middle here are some of these monoatomic ions have different charges, and we'll talk about that in just a little bit. You can see on the right here, the ions tend to be negative, and on the left, they tend to be positive. There's also polyatomic ions, and polyatomic ions are made up of more than one atom. And here are some examples of polyatomic ions. You can see, for example, this ammonia ion, NH4, is a positive charge, and it's called ammonium. You can see that almost all of the polyatomic ions are negatively charged. And there's a table in your book, which we'll talk about in a minute, which shows the polyatomic ions you will be responsible to, to have memorized. Oxaloions, or oxyions, are polyatomic ions that contain at least one or more oxygen atoms. And you can see that most of the polyatomic ions shown in this ta table are also oxyanions. There are a few, for example, cyanide, and again, ammonium that do not have any oxygen, but many of the polyatomic ions do have oxygen in them. Now, there, there are multiple types of compounds, and we'll talk about this in more detail when we talk about bonding, but the, one of the simplest is, called, is an ionic compound. An ionic compound is a compound that's made up of substances that are bound together by ionic bonds. Ionic bonds occur when two or more atoms come together and the result is a complete exchange of electrons from one atom to the other. The at one atom, normally the cation, loses an electron or two electrons or as many as three electrons and they are totally transferred to the anion. And the subsequent electrostatic force that occurs because of that transfer is what holds the atoms together, and that's the ionic bond. The covalent bond, on the other hand, is when two or more atoms come together, and there is a sharing of electrons between the atoms. And so not, one of the two substances do not, um, one of the two substances do not completely take the uh, electron from the other substance, but they share the substances. Ionic compounds are compounds that are held to get, that have one or more ionic bonds, and they have certain uh, characteristics, if you will. The smallest division of an ionic compound is called a formula unit. A formula unit is very much the same thing as a empiric formula. It's the simplest combination of the substances that are bound together by ionic bonds. Sodium chloride is a fairly typical ionic compound. It has a fairly high melting point and conducts electricity when molten. A high electric point, a melting point tells you that ionic bonds tend to be very strong bonds. And the fact that it conducts electricity when molten means that when it melts, the electrons are released in such a way as they can flow from one atom to another. Now, let's talk about nomenclature, or how do we name ionic compounds? First of all, you have the anion. And we've talked about this before, but the anion is the, the substance that gains electrons it's negatively charged, and in simple uh, compounds, the anion is a single atom with electrons added. 
and the suffix IDE is used when discussing compounds that are made up of these atoms. So for example, sodium chloride, chloride ion is, is Cl minus, O2 minus is called an oxide ion. The cation, on the other hand, is the positively charged compound or atom. It's in a simple situation, the atom is it's the atom where the electrons are removed and it generally retains its simple name. So for example, calcium ion is called calcium, two plus. Iron is called iron, three plus. So when you name an ionic compound, the process is the name is taken is the name of the cation followed by the name of the anion with the IDE suffix or the name of the polyatomic ion if, it, if the anion is a polyatomic ion. So let's take a look at some examples here. Aluminum chloride, AlCl3, the cation is aluminum, the anion is chlorine, chlorine is gained electrons from aluminum and it's actually three chlorine atoms, each of them have gained a single electron from the aluminum. Aluminum has lost three electrons, and the name is aluminum chloride. Sodium bromide, sodium is the cation, bromine is the anion, and it's bromide, so sodium bromide. The sodium loses one electron to the bromine. Calcium sulfate, sulfate is one of those polyatomic ions. It has a negative two charge. You'll see that in the table that I'll refer you to in just a second. And so you take the name calcium and sulfate. Iron two hydroxide. Iron is combined with the hydroxide polyatomic ion. We'll talk about this in just a second, but the two means that the charge on the iron ion is two plus, and so you have ox two oxide hydroxide. Remember that the empiric formula is the simple simplest ratio of atoms, anions and cations, that results in a balance in a negative and positive charges. Now we're gonna talk about here in this slide, we're gonna talk about going from the name and how to write the formula. When you do go from the name, you have to decide what the charge on the cation is and what the charge on the anion is. And then you come up with what's known as the least common multiple between those two charges. That's the smallest digit that can, is divisible by the charge of both the anion and the cation. Now in order to work with these compounds, you're going to have to memorize table 2.5 on pages 100 and 101. This is the, the uh, polyatomic ions that I'm going to hold you responsible for. So let's take a look at some problems now. It says give the name of each of the following. First one is CABR2. Remember, the, the first part of the name is the cation, and that CA is calcium. And the second part is this is the anion, and here it's bromi bromide, IDE. So the name of this is calcium bromide. Now the fact there's a two here, you don't put two in, in, in the name anywhere. That's part of the name. The second one here is BA3PO42. So you look this up on the periodic table and you find out this is barium. This is the cation. And now the anion is a polyatomic ion. If you look on that table that I referred you to in the last slide, you'll see that that's phosphate. The next one's HGOH, and this is mercury, if I could spell, 
hydroxide. It's actually mercury-1 hydroxide. I'll explain to you where the 1 comes from in just a minute. Now, this says give the formula for each of the volumes. So sodium iodide. So the symbol for sodium is Na. The symbol for iodine is I. Iodine is in that seven column. If you look on that periodic table in your book, you'll see that that that's, means that it has seven valence electrons. So there's one spot for one uh, charge to be added, and this loses one charge. So it's one and one. The least common multiple is one, and so the formula is NaI, and that's the formula. The next one is magnesium oxide. And you have the same situation here. This is in the six row or group on the periodic table. So it's minus two. This is in the two A row. And it, so it's plus two. And again, the least common multiple is two. Two goes into two one time. Two goes into two one time. So its formula is MgO. The third one's aluminum sulfate. Now, if you look on the table, you know that this is a minus two, and aluminum is in that three row, so it's plus three. The least common multiple is six. Three goes in the six two times, and two goes into six three times. And so here's the formula for aluminum sulfate. 